Woke up, told myself to push and never stop. I've been stressed out, watching both these hands around the clock. With my eyes wide, trying to get the panorama shot. Whole world getting blurry to me, answers getting lost. So I watch my back and keep it moving to the front. And remember that the world's yours, do it how you want. You've been waiting here for too long, think it's time for you to move on. Realize that there's real lies and these real times will be strong. I've been waiting all my life, and it was right before my eyes. Watching all this time slip by, now I realize you know what I mean. But it's hard to have the patience. Have the patience. Watching time fly by, by might be the hardest thing I have to do in life. Frustrated that I ain't where I want to be yet. Yeah. But I know that I'm gonna make it if I chase that check. Yes. Cause I done seen a time go by for too many years now when the stars were aligned. Cause I done seen a time go by. Yeah, I done seen a time go by. I've been waiting all my life, and it was right before my. Watching all this time slip by, now I realize I've been waiting all my life, and it was right before my eyes. Watching all this time slip by, now I realize you know what I mean. Hello there. Tried out some new intro songs this time. That are the same ones I've been using. So today I think I'm gonna actually do the event, as well as a few other things. But mostly those event stages is what I'm going to do. There's a few days left until the event ends. And it'd probably be good to get enough event currency to get some of the stuff from that. By the way, I got 
MDR. Yeah, so now I have all the Murica eyes. You can't actually see in this skin, but she has red and blue eyes as well. So, Mark 23, G41, and MDR, as far as I know, are the only Murica eyes characters. Um, I bet in her damage skin you can see both eyes. Well, on her TV, you can see both eyes, certainly. And her dynamic skin. Yep. All the Murica eyes. By the way, in case you haven't noticed from the YouTube thumbnails, I put one of the Murica eyes G dolls in all of them so far. Either Mark 23 or G41 so far. So, probably gonna put MDR in this one to keep the trend going. Oh yeah, another thing I want to do is try to roll on this gotcha before it ends. Oh, okay, there's seven days left of this rerun. So I might be able to get another roll in, but if I actually got that Mark 23 wedding skin on this account, that'd be sick. I have it on my main account, of course, but... This is the Mark 23 simp account, so... That'd be pretty cool if I got that. Nope! <laughs> Whole bunch of... Boring old furniture. Such blush. So, in the event shop, I can get a bunch of tokens, MDR's exclusive equipment, some other stuff. Um, but you can only get 60 event currency per day. So I'm gonna start farming it today, and whatever I end up with by the end of the event is all the event currency I'm gonna get. And I did check to see if my squads should be able to def to like beat the event, and they should at my current power level. Oh yeah, I did more fairy crafting. I should show those off. These are all the fairies that I've got so far. Got another copy of Command. Got a couple of twin fairies. I ought to do some fairy enhancement. So, speed the other command to this. Then it will go straight to two stars, looks like. So, the amount of XP you get for a duplicate fairy of the same type is 100. The amount you get for a non-duplicate fairy is 10. So if I were to do Twin Fairies instead, which I'm obviously not going to actually do, you only get 10 instead of 100. So it's much more efficient to use duplicates. In addition, if they have the same talent, which is the damage 1 here or the critical 2 here, then they get a bonus 50%. So it's either 150 or 15. But... In order to get the same talent, you'd need to either get lucky or do fairy calibration, which is expensive. So, in practice, most of the ones that I would feed to each other are, like, not the same talent. But there you go, got a two-star command fairy. Um, another thing that I wanted to do was show off equipment enhancement and calibration. So let's set up my squads first, and then see what we end up with. 
for equipment stuff. I'm probably going to want to have at least one... Well, I don't know whether I want to have one team that is focused on anti-armor or to have like a mix of armor and anti-armor on each team. Might depend on what I'm up against. But I know that there are a lot of armored units later on in the event. Probably don't want to put a gold one on M4 yet, because she's not actually a tank. I could also do some combat reports and such to more fully raise the T-Dolls that I'm using, potentially. Oh yeah, some people are on logistics or exploration. I don't think anybody important is on exploration. Probably all the important people on logistics would be on this team, right? Where is... Okay, none of my important machine guns are on either. I could actually maybe pull Echelon 2 off of logistics. Let's see what the timers are. Yeah, I think it's still better to pull three off of logistics. That's the way the timing always works out. Because this is a longer one. So I have more time invested in that than in this one. So... Well, maybe I want to put a handgun on here. But then, what... What I do with the other squad? PPKs and logistics. So I really only have one handgun that I could use. I might want to actually start doing some handgun crafts. Okay, so let's instead just do SG off tank. For now, stick with the standard, then on this squad, I'll do Mark 23, and then, yeah, this, and then fill in whoever. Might need to do some enhancement on them. But I can do that uh, later if I need to. Oh, she can't even equip the gold one yet. Can anyone equip the gold one who it would matter for? Not really. <laughs> I could put it on Mark 23. But she might as well get a tank egg, so... She's not going to be doing much damage. I still don't have a gold armor plate, by the way. Alright, let's just put, like, crit scopes on me. Wait, never mind. Uh, rather have a crit scope on um, M14. This one. 
Sure, why not? Wait, can you can put Night Battle equipment on the shotgun too. You should do that. Can't equip that. Okay, but if I can equip that on bar, then I can equip this one here. It's probably better. Oh yeah, should put a fairy on here as well. I think twin is probably the best. kind of so-so at this level, but it's better than nothing. And I think that I can raise it a little bit. That'll help. Let me feed the other twin fairy. Oh, I just realized that this is Kind of a garbage talent, but it is actually the same talent as the other one, so I get the bonus XP. I want to calibrate it to a different talent eventually. That's what fairy calibration does. I think I mentioned that in passing, but fairy calibration actually just changes the talent. It does cost quite a few calibration tickets. And it's like a random reroll, so it could take quite a while to get the talent you want. Keep some equipment production going. Maybe I'll roll a gold armor plate. Nope. <laughs> oh, by the way, I actually ran out of equipment. There are not equipment. Uh, quick repair contracts between episodes. So I started running some logistics for those, but I'm still pretty short on them, I think. Yeah, I only have 11. So I might have to wait for some repairs that I would normally skip. Alright, that one was story only, so... Skip. Okay. Let's deploy squad 3 first, because it's the one that actually can see where it's going. I don't think I want to have combat fairy auto on. This is evasive enemies, I'm pretty sure. But hopefully this squad is strong enough anyways. M500 is going to get MVP because she has a night battle equipment. Shotgun strunk. Right, gotta change the leader. Very important. Let's make CMS the leader, actually. So, I think this mission, the goal is just to survive. I have done all of these missions relatively recently on my main account. Of course, because I did them during the event. So I do have a pretty good recollection of what to do on them. Okay, I need to kill at least three enemies. Okay, wait, I need to actually occupy multiple heliports as well. But I would want to do that either way. Uh, they are not threatening the command center yet, so I can just do this. Command post, not command center. Thinking StarCraft. You must construct additional command centers. So, the hardest enemy that you have to fight in the last event stage, which I assume is the hardest you have to fight at all, is a 12,000 combat effectiveness armor enemy. Which is actually 
distressingly similar to my current combat effectiveness in night battles. So, I might need to do some leveling up for that, but I think I can do it. And in that last mission, you're fighting pretty much only armor. So... I should be able to counter that pretty well. But... Dealing with the missions before that might be a bit more difficult, actually. Oh, that's it. That's it. You got it. Good job, team. Oh, this one is a huge pain. And it just takes a long time, mostly. Wait, nope. I gotta <laughs> just play this one first, otherwise I can't do anything. Because being able to see is kind of important. Maybe I should swap the echelons so I don't accidentally not <laughs> deploy them in the right order. It's also kind of weird that the one that is blind has to be the one that attacks a base of enemies. Ideally. It would help if I had more than one raised handgun. That might actually be kind of a concern for the later stages, having a blind squad, because I did not have a blind squad when I did this in my main account. Alright, let's do that. Defend my spots. Blind squad on the terminal. Open the gate. Fully supplied, that's good. Oh, this squad is optimized for armor, so it might not be as good for some of these situations. Eh. One action point short, which is kind of a pain. But what's she going to do? I don't think there's much of a turn limit on here, so... Also charge my blind squad around. I think it can pretty much take any of the enemies. I just won't be able to see where it's going. Oh, I realized that I didn't actually capture all the heliports over there. That would probably also help with action points. So maybe I should capture those with this squad rather than trying to charge off anywhere else. Do you wanna be set free? Voices in the sound of the cracks 
Don't capture my radar, bro. I need that. There aren't actually any enemies there, so... Let's just go straight for this radar. So, these radars along the outside, you can't actually, like, capture them normally. So you have to surround capture them. But that basically just means that you walk next to them and wait until they're surrounded. <laughs> and that's just a story thing. I might run out of ammo on this squad. M500 for MVP. Uh, hmm. Let's back this squad up to try to have it resupply. And then it can move out. That might be my best bet because this squad is low on supplies and far away from any supply point. Yeah, that can get me a radar. And I don't think there's any enemies along this road because there would be red nodes if there were enemies. It doesn't look like these nodes are connected, unless you look closely. There's just like barely a line there. Yeah, luckily I haven't taken much damage at all yet, but that might change in the later levels. Squad doing what, is, what are you doing? Why why is that showing up like that? It's a glitched out display right there. Uh, let's do repairs 
Should be pretty quick because I haven't taken much damage. Seven minutes. Shotgun stick is not going to repair. In the meantime, let's do some handgun recipes. Doesn't look like any particularly good ones. And equipment. Still no gold armor plates. Oh yeah, I was gonna do defense drone. I did get a few waves further in defense drill. I don't think I'm gonna even try to clear the next checkpoint of it yet. Alright, let's wait until CMS is repaired and then I can do a defense drill with just that squad. And probably not get that far. As if I would fill the echelon slots when I only have like five echelon slots total. I feel like that warning about the echelon slots not being filled is kind of just useless in all circumstances. Because if you're early game, then you can't afford to deploy four echelons for a defense drill. And if you're not early game, then you don't need to deploy four echelons for defense drill. You could easily do it with one. So... I don't think there's any point in which you would be able to deploy four squads for defense drill, and you would want to. Unless you're playing really suboptimally. Like, raising a full bunch of squads in parallel. If they actually made defense drill longer, instead of only 109 waves, like I think they should, then there might be a point to having multiple squads, because then a late game commander would actually need more than one squad. But as it is, you can beat waves 100 through 109 easily with one squad. That nade, though. That sap mod nade hits really hard when it gets a good hit. Yeah, that one was off center, but the previous hit took out a lot of enemies. And that's it. I do have a bunch of extra energy, but I want to save it for data mode once I get my uh, data team stronger. Let's look into doing some more raising of my anti-armor team. Oh yeah, I was going to do equipment enhancement. Uh, let's do calibration on this first. 
So the calibration rate determines, like, the base stats of it. And sometimes there are multiple stats that can be calibrated. And you can eventually get them all to be full, but sometimes, rather than improving your stats overall, it'll just trade off between the two of them. Or three of them, sometimes. That time it improved my stats overall. That time it did as well, I think, because it improved this by two steps and dropped this down by one. In any case, if you just do the calibration enough times, you're basically guaranteed to get max calibration. It just might take a long time depending on how unlucky you are. And then, to enhance this, you feed it either other equipment or these things. What are these called again? I forget. I don't even have enough parts to fully enhance this, I realize. I'm pretty sure that's the same whether you use fodder or parts or like those capsules. Equipment enhancement capsules. That's what they are basically. So I do have my logistics prioritizing parts heavily, but they're still rather short. So I'm gonna just do enough unique equipment enhancements to get the daily quest for it and keep a few parts behind. Also got... Oh, it's not a daily quest, it's a weekly quest. For Oh, there is a daily quest for equipment enhancement. Maybe I already got it today. I think I did. There's a weekly quest for calibration. Anyways, pros are done. I do have 11 quick repair tickets, so I'll probably use those going forward if I need to do any longish repairs. So this map, it's kind of like a puzzle map. We've got some red beans to avoid. I think one of them is, like, right there, but I think it won't attack me the first turn. I could take the radar. That would probably help a lot. By the way, night battle equipment cannot be enhanced, but can be calibrated. So a max calibrated gold night battle equipment will have 100% mitigation of the night penalty. Which means that you'll have your full accuracy stat. Anything less than that, and you'll have some of your accuracy removed. Okay, so they changed from they changed from different types of enemies. Wait, did that happen when I stepped on the radar? I don't think I stepped on the radar the last time I did this. So the stepping on the radar actually changes the enemies. Well, I don't want to, like, step close to them right now. In case there's something afoot. I do want to cap the radar, so I think I'll just stay. You missed a little bit of the stream at the beginning. But you can always check it out on YouTube later, if you want. 
Uh, it's only been going for like 40 minutes. Most of that was doing the first few event stages. I did show off like equipment calibration and enhancement just recently. the enemies did change, then they're still red beans, and I still don't want to fight them. Did they just, like, change their AI? Is that what happened? just set up for future endeavors. That might be more useful. Yeah, I'm not doing the main story today. I'm doing the event story. The event stages. So the plan is that I'm going to get through the event and then I can farm the event currency on the 5-7 stage. I might even try to get 5-7. I did in the stream intro have it 5 7 themed. Alright, so what are these red beans going to do? Nothing. Are they like literally AI turned off now? Or will they still attack me if I get nearby? They're still looking angry when I'm nearby. But... I can... still... get these retrievals. And then there's just one more. Gotta rescue the MDR. This way, then I can complete it. Oh, derp! You can't. It doesn't matter which way I do this. I feel like planning mode should automatically rescue if you're moving on to a thing, but whatever. Mission success. Okay, that was kind of the mission that I was most worried about, actually. <laughs> Especially doing that one in the dark. Well, when I have one of my squads blind as well. Ten minutes. Uh, yeah, let's quick repair that one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, uh, one of the people will or Ionio, specifically, posted it in the Discord. But I am actually free to play on both of my accounts currently, so I'll not be buying it. <laughs> Here's a meme about it. But yeah, I went like free to play on my main account a while ago. And obviously this is a free-to-play account, so. <laughs> but if I was still buying stuff, I would definitely buy that. That package was not intended to be one dollar.
<laughs> the free to play tag. You actually have like a tag on your account for being free to play? Or is it just like a metaphorical free to play tag? I guess this probably never goes away on our free to play account. Yeah. So as long as you have this, you are a certified free to play account. I have spent quite a bit of money on my main account, but I have been haven't been spending money on it for a while. So that's why I say it's like currently free to play. Pairs are done. So there are three more combat missions. Two more and then the 5 7 map. Oh, this one is a huge pain as well. Uh, hmm. Doing this one with two echelons might be difficult actually. Because you actually you have to defend the command post. What's the goal? Getting to there. And you can't cap these heliports. That's why you have to defend. Unless you have a para, then you can. But I don't have a para. No. Damn it. <laughs> I deployed the blind squad first. When the sun goes down on us. Means there's no way back up. This only Aegis in the squad. That's interesting. Extra tanky, but not actually doing much damage. gonna lose one of those heliports probably. Yeah, and 500 just gets MVP against all the base of enemies that the squad faces. Yeah, I don't want to pull more squads off of logistics unless I have to. I think I probably can beat this without pulling squads off of logistics, but it's going to be a pain. This map also has death stacks that you're not supposed to fight, if I recall correctly. This event 
has a decent number of death stacks, like the red beans on the last mission. I'm not a fan of those in general, as a map mechanic. Oh, nice, I got tomato. Well, they are definitely hard for my current team at 24,000. I probably could beat those on my main account. I forget if I actually fought those when I did this on my main account. Alright, let's take out this guy so he doesn't cause any issues. I also probably can't use friend support echelons on this because it's an event. So I can't use my crutch that I would use in some other circumstances. Should have resupplied before I moved back off of that heliport, but whatever. Let's open that. Yeah, in any case, you are supposed to be able to beat this mission without fighting those manticores, and I'm pretty sure that I can. They're intended to be the sort of enemy that you don't fight. is definitely taking a bunch of damage here. Um, that's kind of unfortunate. The Mark 23 had to get hit there. Especially because I'm short on quick repair tickets. This is armor, so that will be good for this squad to deal with. Do I even have night battle equipment on my ARs? I think I might not. <laughs> that would probably help a lot. I might have forgot to actually equip them for night battles properly. Oh, then died. That's oof. Didn't even do the sad sound effect for me. How do you do this again? Okay, well, this is gonna move here. Do I have knife battle equipment on here? I can't actually change it in combat. 
Yeah, I don't have any. Um. Yeah, I don't have any knife battle equipment on. That would probably have helped. But I'm not turning back now, despite critical damage. I think I can still beat this mission. Okay, if they don't move, I can actually get through there. Ah, they moved! Okay, I think what I do is... Oh. Move forward, like... Into this space right here, and then the next turn they let me through. Alright, let's just do this. No, they don't let me through quite yet. Alright, did they let me through on this turn? I do have to prevent this from getting surround captured. Don't die, CMS. This is going to be a painful repair session after this one. In terms of how many quick repair tickets I'm going to have to use, probably. I only have like 10-ish right now. No, they're still not letting me through there. I can do an emergency repair on CMS as well. It might be worthwhile. I think there's another enemy down there as well, so I, if I wait any longer, I won't be able to fight it. Mm. Maybe I should just restart this mission. I'm gonna have to go through a lot of hassle. But if I brute force it, then I'll still have no ammo and rations when I get down there. And I'm pretty sure there's another enemy. 
Uh, yeah, let's just terminate and come back with better preparation. just swap out Sten rather than repairing her in this case. Now I did get a few quick repair, a few more quick repair tickets at some point, so I'm not that short on them. Um, having night battle equipment would be good. Actually, it might be better to have this plus nine uh, EOT rather than a green crit scope. <laughs> yeah, I got a gold crit scope, and I maxed it out as well for helping out with corpse dragging. So, that is probably my best piece of equipment total right now. I don't think I have any other maxed out gold equipment. And also crit scopes are really useful. So now I actually have night battle equipment on there. That should help. Maybe I should also put in some enhancement now. That will also help out making my teams do better. There we go. Level 90, mark 23, so she can get her links. Okay, good. I'm gonna do some more handgun production. So still pretty low rarity handguns. Alright, I think I want to Push CMS to 90 as well. That's going to cost a lot of cores to link her. But I think that's worthwhile. I've not leveled the skills of anyone besides my main assault rifles for the most part. So that would probably be something to do as well. Raise the skills of some of my other T dolls. Alright, still have 80 cores left. Been getting a pretty decent chunk of cores from my Corpse Dragon. Let's push that the rest of the way with capsules. Okay. So now... Yeah, still don't really have any top tier off tanks. Can I level her up while I'm repairing her? No. I was thinking I could dummy link her instead of repairing her, but if she's already in repairs, then I can't do that. Because I can't level her up while she's in repairs. I mean, I have a bunch of Sten dupes to dummy link her, so I might as well at least push her to 70. How am I doing on reports? Lots of reports. I could probably just push her to 90. How many reports will that take? Quite a few. <laughs>
Yeah, sure. Why not? So then we go to pants. I'm gonna have to use capsules, but I have plenty of those. Dummy legs. Okay, I don't have enough duplicates for all of them, but it only cost three cores. I don't think I'm going to be raising FNC or Uzi anytime soon. I, mean, I already have FNC partially raised, but not that much. So now, do I want to raise the units in this squad anymore? Might want to raise M14. I think I have duplicates of her as well. I might raise Sar at some point. Should I do bar also? To 90? I have the reports for it, and I'm pretty sure I have the cores for it also. And then I can have pretty close to max level squads. of deep M14 stuff. More than I need, actually. So I can then retire the extras, because I don't think I'm going to be raising a second M14 right now. Yeah, I don't want to scrap the SAR-21, because I might raise her. She's actually pretty good. Better than a lot of the assault rifles I have right now. Not that I have that many options. Although AN94 would be a higher priority. Alright, I didn't do my enhancement of these two yet. And then I'll also have some more equipment to give them. Yeah, I don't care about one invasion. So, you can now equip this. Uh, she wants an EOT for the firepower as a Molotov. Get a cloak in here. Ammo box. I have a gold ammo box, too. I think I should... Well, I can't fully enhance that ammo box yet. I can at least calibrate its ammo capacity, probably. I don't really care about calibrating the evasion on it. And I probably can't enhance it very much because I'm out of parts. So I won't worry about that yet. Oh, hey. I got the second to last tier of this event. Which is good because today is the last day. <laughs> the last tier is only for like bragging rights, and you have to spend a thousand tokens to get it, so that's not happening. I usually don't go for the last tier of those on my main account either, because I don't want to spend a thousand tokens just for bragging rights, unless it's a gotcha that I want to spend on anyways. Oh, 
M4 is still 4x, but everybody else on that team is 5x. And everyone except for Lemming on this team is 5x. Uh, let's not deploy the blind squad first. Now M4 or M14 got MVP even against evasive enemies. Because M14 is pretty good. Yeah, it's evasive on both sides here. But I do have some extra action points, so I could do this. This is gonna include a swap. So I'll actually have one action point left after that. So yeah, this should do what I want. That way, my AR team can face both of the evasive squads. And it turns out having night battle equipment and being a little bit more raised makes you way better at killing those squads. Who the fuck it? teams down there. Hopefully my ARSMG team is actually capable of taking on the armor teams as well. What didn't you know about? Oh yeah, my air SMG team is actually quite good at killing those. Yeah, little known fact, night battle equipment does make you more effective at night. The more you know. squad to go down here. I think this plan will succeed and not choke. Anytime that you have a planned echelon trying to move across another one that has an active plan, then it doesn't work. But since the first one will finish its plan before the second one goes across it, I think it'll work. Oh yeah! Just as I planned. I 
I think I missed the resupply opportunity there again, like I did last time. Because now I'm going to have to go out of my way to resupply this squad, probably. Or one of these squads. I could do that. I think this squad is doing well enough against armor that I might as well just do this one. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to cancel the plan. Wait, uh... <laughs> I <laughs> figured out, well, memorized the hotkey for doing the app switcher so I don't have to, like, exit out of full screen to do that. Because, of course, the button to do the app switcher is, like, hidden when it's in full screen. I think I'm going to try to make sure that I have more supplies available this time. No, it's just end squad. Or end turn. So that if I want to, I might be able to brute force those guys. My Echelon 3's listed combat effectiveness is still significantly less, but that's because it doesn't have high accuracy at night. So the combat effectiveness at night especially can lie when you're doing uh, like anti-armor squads against armor. Because their accuracy stat doesn't really matter in that case. Pretty sure the Manticores don't have evasion. I could check that in the map thing. Um. Let me see. Is there a link to that on Reddit still? Uh, enemy map generator. This is a useful thing to show off as well. This is the right event. Why is it question marks? This event has a name. Uh, okay. Uh, this is the map that I'm on? Yeah. Okay, these guys have no evasion. Manticores do occasionally have evasion, but... Usually the ones you run into early on do not. 
and they have 33 armor. So that's why, like, I'm not worried about my AP ammo being gold or enhanced, because how much does my AP ammo do? The most armor I'm running into right now is 70. And my AP ammo has... Uh, can't look at it. Okay, well, I have, like, 100 AP. So I have way more than enough AP for this. Um. So yeah, I think I could be able to brute force the Manticores if I wanted to. I think if I, like, time it right, I might be able to run past the manticores as well. I don't know what triggers them to start moving. Uh, I'm gonna have, like, five action points. Uh, I won't have enough to run past them. From here... I think I still won't have enough to run past them. Assuming that they don't move on this turn, which they might. Yeah, they move. Okay, so for now, let's just do this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I have enough ammo to get through the manticores and then whatever's behind them. Because I think there's just one enemy after them. If I recall correctly. Actually, uh, that is something that I could look at on the map. Yes, there is one enemy past them. go straight for this. I'm pretty sure that that will instantly win the battle, so I don't need to worry about my command post. YOLO! Back up. Hmm. 
Maybe not. Oh, let's close that. Accidentally opened the wrong thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna treat Mark 23 this time, I think. The skill timing doesn't work out that well either when Mark 23 is on auto skill. Okay. So maybe I actually need to do like forced manual to get it to do well. at kiting. Alright, when do the... Alright, trigger Mark 23's skill right as they start shooting. That should help. Oh, she just retreated. Alright, I think I got it. <laughs> Oh, it's not very easy, though. This is what happens when you brute force squads and you're not supposed to fight. But it did work! Okay. Hopefully I still have enough power to beat this. Yeah. If you kite the Nemium, that helps. Bar got MVP despite being critically damaged. Alright, we got it! Not very smoothly, but we did get it. Aw, Mark 23 is unhappy. Did I just get Shipka? I wasn't even paying attention. Aha! I already had Chipka before as well. I think she is uh, generally kind of mediocre. She's like a four star version of Swomi, right? Pretty sure she has the same skill timing and whatnot as Swomi. And Swomi's already kind of iffy in terms of usefulness. compared to some other SMGs.
Give me a gold armor plate. Yeah, it is pretty unusual to get a four-star drop. Oh. <laughs> I don't even have the parts. My logistics priorities are pretty heavily in parts right now, but just can't keep enough parts around. Let's do the friend batteries. I haven't done that yet today. I think if I get enough, yeah. If I get enough um, batteries, I should be able to do some more enhancement in the fairy room. Just uh, grab the first ones I come through. I think I got all the ten battery ones. No, oh, I got all the batteries now. Okay. Alright, let's check the fairy room. Pretty sure that I have enough to upgrade this. Alright, this is the second to last combat mission. I'm pretty sure. Ah, this one. Fart. They don't even let you deploy more than one squad. They only let you deploy one squad. This one's more of a puzzle type deal. Okay, let's go into here. Those enemies are kind of tough. Maybe I need to use a different squad for this, because they're evasive. And this squad is not terribly optimized for evasive. Although they're also not great at hurting M200, or M500 rather. So, we're kind of at an impasse. Oh, Mark 23 is still on forced manual. I should turn that off. Because I'm not going to be remembering to automatically trigger it every time. Can I cancel planning mode? Cancel the planning mode. Okay. Unforce. Gotta ask for consent first. Oh, 
those guys actually hit pretty hard. Yellow. With all these, like, event enemies, I never really know what their, like, attributes are compared to the normal enemies. that one. Okay, I think I do need to have that one open eventually. that I'm on. It looks like it's open, but I really can't tell very well and it won't let me resupply, so I'm guessing it's closed. Yeah, it, it definitely looks like an open helipad. Wait, uh, just go here. Take significant damage there. Yeah, whatever. Diary. Okay, open this one. can't break through M500 armor. I think I definitely would have been better off with an air SMG team for this. I think I probably can do it with the squad. It's just not ideal. Wait, uh, I can open this one, which is useful, I think. But now I'm gonna need to get that to open this gate, probably. I don't know. Theoretically, I can get next to the command post from here. I think I've actually wiped all the enemies on the map now. Wait, maybe there's enemies next to the exit. Alright, open 
that. So... I can get to here. I can't yet get to here, because the only way in is from that door that's currently closed, but I think if I go to here, then I can open that. I don't know if there are enemies there. There could be. Wait, no, there are, it's not red, so there's obviously not enemies there. Pretty sure all the enemies on the map are gone. Okay, so I want to capture this node. So end round. Then when I go here. Oh, shut up, diary. Uh, wait, I can't open this gate. How do I open that gate? Haven't I touched, like, all the terminals on the map? Which terminal didn't I do? Uh, was it this one? Yeah, but which one was it? Wait. Uh, such a pain. <laughs> I just need to open that one gate and I don't know which terminal it's in. Yeah, it is. Okay, it was like the very first one that I went past. Yeah, if there was a turn limit, that would be a huge pain. So much rush hour. <laughs> this is like one of those downtown areas where there's one-way streets everywhere. That's like literally what this is. Except that there's a bunch of closed-off intersections. Alright, we got it. Finally. Alright, now I think for this last mission... My AP team should be well suited to it. I am almost out of quick repair tickets. Yeah, I'll wait for two minutes. Course! Excellent. Yeah, I don't really want to spend batteries on reports for now, because I want to spend them all on upgrading the ferry room for now. Still no gold armor plate. By the way, Girls Frontline is going to be made into an enemy, for anyone who didn't know that. I'm actually getting kind of close to enough gems to buy another Echelon. 
It's a new week for sharing, right? I don't know the hotkey for the back thing, so I'll just... Uh, hello, stream? OBS, do you understand? Okay, there we go. Hopping in and out of full screen caused to be very confused for a minute there. So, this next mission is the one where you farm 5-7, so this is the one that I'll be farming for my daily things and maybe farming it a little bit extra to try and get 5-7, even if I don't get lucky to have her drop, I can, after getting 500 of these medals, Get a guaranteed one. And there is about a week left in the event, but the exchange shop stays open for a week after that. Okay, the second neural cloud. Nice. I like Tokarev. JSO5. That's like the green rifle, right? That I don't really care about at all. Jeez, the... Yeah, that's who I was thinking of. What does she do again? Isn't it like something super gimmicky? I think I can look at her skill in here. Oh, it's a piercing thing. Yeah, I forgot. Yep, that's pretty gimmicky. Yeah, it's like a, a bamboo, except less powerful and with the piercing effect. So, super gimmicky. So no, I'm not going to get JSO5 over 5.7. I really like Tokarev. It's too bad that she's not that useful. <laughs> I also could, if I need to, use fairy skills to help get through this, but I don't think I need to. Took a little bit of damage to the manticores. The rest of the squads are mostly Armored Doggo squads, if I recall correctly. So, my machine guns should make short work of those. Yep, <laughs> wrecked. Yeah, I've been farming this map daily on my main account as well, so I'm significantly more familiar with it.
fun fact, I also made a video about this map ages ago. I think I mentioned that in a previous stream. But like, what the last time this event ran on EN, I made a video about this map and the best route to farm 5-7. Which I concluded is this one. There, you could also uh, do this map in a different way by going around the south area, but you have fewer drop chances, so this route is more efficient. Yeah, what I could try doing in order to farm this event without taking any damage to the Manticore is, is maybe use the Twin Fairy skill in that Manticore fight. And that might help. Oh yeah, there's this scene that happens in the event. Although I'm pretty sure that it turns out that she was just, like, uh, knocked out or something, not actually killed. I think they all live happily ever after at the end of this. I only have three quick repair tickets left. Well, in any case, I'm basically where I wanted to end the stream. I did get through all of the event stages, and that last one is the one that I'll be farming for the rest of the daily event currency. Wait, I got a pet? From the event? <laughs> the only reason I noticed this is because I got the achievement. Oh yeah, I got a bird. Bird. Nice. So, now I have an extra 1,000 comfort on this dorm. And I can apply that to expeditions the next time my expedition team comes in. Because there's two pet slots currently. I can get more by upgrading it. Did I get more tokens? Uh, oh, I did! I got a bunch more tokens. Do it. Give me the skin. I, I mean, having any skin would be nice. But especially the Mark 23 wedding skin. That is something. Oh. Life to do smoke. I don't even have Sobi. Uh, what even is her name? It's uh, Jessie from Team Rocket. That's her name. <laughs> I don't remember her actual name. I do like her design. And she's, like, decently good as well. Uh, she's, like, 
T something thousand, right? No, T five thousand. There you go. Uh, no, uh, rifle. I don't have her, do I? No. Okay. But when I do get her, I'll have a skin. Yeah, this gotcha still goes for a while also, the rerun gotcha. So I'll be able to do a few more pulls on that. I might um, comfortify my second dorm a bit more as well, but I don't think there's much point in me doing that on stream, because I already showed what I'm doing for that, like literally just jamming in furniture at random. So I think that's it for today, and I'll do another stream in a bit. Probably like two days again. Seem to be keeping the two days schedule. So catch you later.